Hey everybody, let's take a look at the new easy way of creating custom activities for UiPath with the Activity Creator extension for Visual Studio. We'll walk through an example where we create this simple addition activity that takes in two numbers and outputs the sum. Let's get started. First step is to open up Visual Studio 2019. 2017, 2015, anything earlier, these won't work. Now go up to the Extensions menu, Manage Extensions, and search for UiPath in the online category. You'll see the, the UiPath Activity Creator. I already have it installed, but what you have to do is click Install, and Restart Visual Studio, and you'll have it. Now, once you have the extension installed, creating a new activity project is as easy as going up to File, New, Project. In the search bar, and look for UiPath. And here's our standard activity project. Click Next, give it a name. I'm going to name my, my company. Dot my product. This is the standard name and convention for UiPath activities. Some name of your company, dot, and then whatever product you're going to be wrapping in this UiPath activity. Once you put the name in, no need to change these other fields, just hit Create, and it's going to spit out the foundation of an activity package. So we'll give it a second there. Once it's done, you can head up to your Solution Explorer and see what was generated. Now at the bottom here is a shared folder. These are a bunch of support files, designer controls, things that we use internally at UiPath and thought would be useful for you as well. Don't forget about that for now. Now, the rest and the crux of an activity package are these three projects here. The first is just an auxiliary project. It contains tools, models, clients, enums, anything that can support the main bits of the project, which are the activities project. This contains the execution logic for your, your activity. This is where you put what happens once you hit run in UiPath Studio. And the last project is design. This is the UI. When you drag an activity onto the canvas, your UIs will go in here. So, they're empty right now, but to add some activities, just select any of these three projects, go back up to extensions, UiPath, add activities. And the new activity creator wizard will come up. You have two options here. You can either import a set of activities that you've previously exported from the wizard. This is useful if you want to save drafts or share your work with someone. Or you can create from scratch. Since this is our first time in here, let's create. Go down and add an activity. You can add as many as you want, but to keep it simple here, we're just going to create one. Name this addition. Give it a description that says adds two numbers together. The type we're going to leave is simple. In here, you can create simple activities, which is what you saw in the beginning, or scopes, which is what you use, for example, in the Excel activities, where you want to distribute the same information to several activities at once. Let's keep it simple. The properties will edit in a bit, but before that, one word on the timeout. You might notice in certain activities like click, the UI automation activities, they all contain timeouts. Where if your activity doesn't complete its work in a certain amount of time, an error will be thrown and presumably logged. We'll leave that unchecked for now. But let's go edit our properties. We'll give some properties to this activity. Properties are the inputs and outputs that appear on the properties pane in UiPath Studio. Let's give it three properties, two inputs, and let's change this one to an output. You'll notice that this field is editable in case you want to add any other categories. So for the names, we'll say first number, second number, and the sum, because we're going to be adding these two together. We'll add some generic descriptions. All right. And then we'll tell the creator, are these input variables or output variables? The first two are going to be inputs, and the last one will be out. You might be thinking, didn't we do that in the first column here? Sort of. This first category column is just the category in which these 
inputs and outputs appear in the properties pane. These are the actual nature of the variables. So I could change this to something like common category and still put an output in there. We'll leave it as output so it makes some sense. Now, the next column is the type of the variable. Since these are going to be numbers, let's change them all to integers. But just note that if you wanted to, you could browse for types just as you do in the variables section of UiPath Studio. And you can read any type of variable that you want. Like. For now, though, we'll keep it simple. The last column determines if these inputs are required or not. We're going to make the inputs required and the output no. Now, there are two effects to doing this. The first is that if the user of your activity does not provide these inputs, then a validation error will be thrown. The workflow will not run until these properties have been filled in. The second bonus is that all required properties get added to the designer of the activity. So you don't have to worry about adding text fields. These will be sent automatically. OK, we have our properties. Let's click Finish. And watch what happens over here in the Solution Explorer. You'll notice that two files were created. One, Addition in the Activities Project, and another, Addition Designer in the Design Project. Let's take a look at Addition first. So here we have an activity created with the name we provided it. And you'll notice that it has display name and a description. These are completely localized, and they are the descriptions that we provided. I'll just jump into here so you can confirm. Here we have our addition description, and it's that description I added for the activity. It adds two numbers together. The one nice thing about the activity creator is that it localizes every string that you put in there. You're still responsible for the translation, but there's no overhead to set up localization. Let's take a look at our properties. First one is a default, continue on error. This is something you might have seen before in the standard UiPath activities, where if your activity throws an error, but you want it to be ignored and keep going with the workflow, continue on error takes care of that. It defaults to false, though, so you don't have to worry about it if you don't want it. And then after that, we have our three properties. First number, second number, sum. You'll notice that the first two are in the input category. The last is in the output. First two are in arguments. The last one's an out argument, and all are of type int. Let's keep going. The constructor is blank, but if you wanted to add default values to your inputs, you could set them in here. Cache metadata, this is just another way of saying, run this stuff at design time. And what we're choosing to run are validations. So you remember that I selected required on both of our inputs, first number, second number. And we've automatically generated the validations for these, where if they are null, meaning they're not provided, a validation error will be thrown. Now, the last piece of this, the execute async method, is where the actual execution logic of the activity happens. When you hit run in UiPath Studio, it's coming in here. It's first wrapping our inputs. It's executing whatever logic you want, and then it's setting our outputs. So let's replace this comment block with what we want the activity to actually do. We'll create a sum variable, and that's going to be first number plus second number. And then let's set our output variable to sum. We're done. The activity is going to add these two together. Before we build this, let's take a look at the other file, though, which is Addition Designer. We have a whole bunch of setup XAML here, imports and resources, icons. But what I want to focus on is this piece in the center. We have three sections here. First, we've created a grid with four rows in it. All of them have dynamically sizing heights. And in those four rows, we have our two input variables. First row contains the label for the first number and then a text box for that number. Third row, fourth row, same thing, but for the second number. We'll dive more into the designer files in later videos, 
But just know that if you want to add more properties, add some rows, and then add your controls <clears throat> underneath. Okay, let's build this package and see what it actually produces in UiPath Studio. To do that, go back to the Solution Explorer and right click your design project. That's the third one in here. Go to Publish. This next screen is going to ask you, once your package is built, where should it be placed? And I'm going to put it in C Program Data UiPath Packages, because I know that this is already a local feed in UiPath Studio. I'll go back here, paste my path, and proceed. So the next step is to determine how you want the package built. The only thing you really have to pay attention to now is the configuration. And you have two options, release, which is for your final build, the one that goes into production, the one that gets published to UiPath Connect's marketplace, or debug. These are for the incremental builds that you make as you're creating and testing a package. And this is what I'm going to choose. The only difference between these is that release sets a defined version, whereas debug will timestamp the version of all of your packages so you can have increments as you're developing. So let's select debug, hit publish, and it'll start building our package. Okay, you can see at the bottom here that all three of our projects succeeded and one NuGet package has been published to the location that we specified. C Program Data UiPath Packages. And let's open up UiPath Studio and see what it actually looks like. Go to Packages, and you'll see it created my company, my product, activities. Install, save. And here we go. Go over to the activities pane and you'll see my company is now in here. In a subcategory, my product, and here's our addition activity. Let's add it in. Nice. So you'll notice the designer is just as we went through. First number, second number are required inputs. They have the descriptions that we put in right there in the designer. And you'll notice that there are validation warnings. Please provide a value for first number and second number. So let's do that. Get rid of those warnings. And you'll notice that when I enter this number five here, it appears up here in the properties pane as well. They're bound together. To show you the reverse, let's add the second number up here. There we go, five and 10. And notice that our first two numbers are in the input category and our sum is in the output category, just as we specified in the builder. So for the output, I'm going to create a variable called sum. And let's get a message box just to prove that it actually is executing our sum logic. Okay. When we hit run on this, we get our message box. It says 15, success. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll have a few more videos on creating more complex activities and setting package metadata. But for now, enjoy the UiPath Activity Creator.